So for those of you out there who are consuming the internet peripheral content in the world of professional wrestling, as I do, I'm sure you do if you're watching this video here, one of the huge new YouTubers in the world of pro wrestling, along with Stevie Richards and the fun stuff that he's doing on his channel, is our boy Maven. That's right, Tough Enough Maven. Old Maeve, good old Maeve, from back in the Ruthless Aggression era. Maven has his own YouTube channel now, and he's got a little bit of a different approach to it than we see with other pro wrestlers. He's not doing the podcast thing. He's not doing the shoot interview thing, brother, brother. He's sitting there, and he's doing really basic, like, wrestling 101 ask a wrestler general type questions and he's really blowing the fuck up and he had the chance to sit down i mean really blowing the fuck up like meteorically like i think he's already got a hundred thousand subscribers he's been doing this like two months three maybe he's growing quick for more on the youtube channel and the meteoric rise of maven Listen to Maven, who sat down and had a conversation with Chris Van Vliet about this very thing on Chris's podcast, Insight with Chris Van Vliet. Check out this clip. You are a full-fledged YouTuber now. I don't know about full-fledged. It, no, it is. Un, your growth <laughs> on YouTube has been insane. And congratulations. Oh, thank you. Like, you are not even two months into this, yeah. and you're about to get the silver play button, which is 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. You know you know, there's a prize, right? I, I know there's the a- The silver play button? Yeah, I know there's a plaque that comes with it. It took me, it took me seven and a half years to get 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. I and you're gonna know. do it in two months. No one's more shocked than I am. Literally, you met the guy who runs it with me. Zach. When he uh, came to me with the idea, I, like I try to talk him out of it. I was like, listen, I was like, there's bigger names out there. And he explained to me, and he was right about one thing. He said, wrestlers use YouTube wrong, and it's an underutilized platform. And he, it's, it's a basically, here's the simple, simple process that we do. Most wrestlers make wrestling videos and put them to YouTube and then wonder why they don't do well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're Steve Austin, your podcast is going to do great numbers but for the most part you know, there's so many podcasts and stuff out there he told me we're going to make youtube videos that deal with wrestling mm -hmm. and at that moment that was our first zoom the light went off yeah so you're doing the reverse most people are yeah. making wrestling videos on exactly. youtube you're making youtube videos about that wrestling. happen to be about wrestling this fucking guy is on a roll Doing something where he's just sitting down answering the internet's most searched questions for pro wrestling. He's doing a very basic pro wrestling 101. And it's working for him huge. For an example of what this looks like, here's a clip from Maven doing the most Googled questions for pro wrestling. Check out these clips. <laughs> Are WWE wrestlers actors? Would I consider myself an actor? The answer is yes. I mean, when guys go out there and they're cutting a promo and they're talking about how, you know, they're going to see somebody at the next pay-per-view and stuff, it's, it's all, it's all acting. I mean, are we Meryl Streep? Nah. Next, are WWE wrestlers athletes? You bet your sweet, yes. When do WWE wrestlers Find out who wins. When you arrive at the arena at one o'clock in the afternoon, you go to catering. Now, when you go to catering, you're starting to get a buzz. Some of the times the production meeting isn't even completed yet. Guys find out who wins after the production meeting, after catering, and then they would put out what's called a run sheet. This sheet would actually show who was gonna wrestle, what order in the card you were gonna wrestle, who your agent or producer was of the match, the amount of time for that match. So you might have Maven versus Stevie Richards, six minutes. And then it might say on the side, Arn Anderson. Then we would go up and Stevie and I would get together. We would go, we would find Arn. And at that moment right there, Arn will tell us who's going over. How do WWE wrestlers 
bleed. It's called a gig. What's a gig? A gig is a tiny little razor blade. A lot of times guys would tape it up and they would put it in their hand. I would always tape it up and put it in my wrist tape. And then that way I could take one piece of tape off, grab it. We would take the gig out, you take it, you hit your head, and then twist. It's gonna open up your blood capillaries, they're gonna pour out. A lot of guys, if they know they're gonna get color for that night, they might take like a baby aspirin or something. Why? Because it thins your blood. The minute you gig, you're gonna bleed more. <laughs> I was allergic to aspirin, so my very first match that I had to get color was Taker, un, you know, Undertaker, Royal Rumble. I told Taker backstage, hey man, I'm allergic to aspirin, I'm not going to be able to bleed that much. That's when he had the bright idea of, let's take a couple, uh, couple shooters. And me being a Jack fan, him being a Jack fan, I was okay with that. Maven has a really fun channel. I see why he's blowing up so quick. A lot of the stuff that he's talking about is stuff we already know. Talking about how to blade. We know that. Why wrestlers wear underwear. We know that. Do we know that? Is that something we know? We know that. Now we just like to look at it, right? Sweaty guys all muscled up in their underwear. Mm! Man meat. Slapping together man meat. Mmm. That's why we watch. Don't lie to yourself. But, Ma <laughs> but Maven's got a fucking awesome thing going. Whoever sat him down, his guy, was like, hey, I got an idea. This is what's missing in wrestling. He's 100% right. Stevie Richards, I don't know if they have the same guy, but he's having similar success doing something outside the box. Something different than the, the normal podcast, shoot interview, insider baseball. And not, not to say that that stuff's passe or nobody cares about that anymore. Or it's just everybody does it. And there's nothing wrong with that. It gives me plenty of content. I like it, but like I watch it. But there's room out there for other things. You know, that's something that I sat back when I sat back about, you know, I want to do a podcast on wrestling. But what can I do that's different, right? Everybody does a podcast about wrestling. Everybody sits down and talks about, well, on Monday Night Raw, this guy faced that guy. How can I do different? Well, nobody is really talking about, and, you know, some people do, you know, when news happens on podcasts and in interviews, people cover it. But to specifically focus on the podcasts and YouTube shows and the shoot interviews like I do, it's it's a niche, um, but Stevie Richards, he's found his niche. He's doing great things with his, you know, breakdown videos and then, uh, you know, fucking Maven with his one on one type videos, ask a wrestler basic questions. He really dumbs it down for people and it's clearly working well for him and props on him. And look, Maven, to me, I don't know if he's just slept on as a talent you know, one thing he talked about with Chris is one he, he was never able to escape being the tough enough guy. He was never able to transition his character into something else, and he thinks that that's probably why his career never panned out. But I think, look, Maven can talk like a motherfucker. He's charismatic. He has a little bit, even though he's nice. He seems like a good dude. There's also, you can see there's a little bit of a natural healness to him. I think, you know who he reminds me of tons? Adam Pierce. And I think Maven could make a hell of a general manager. And I'm not the first to come up with that. I think even Chris brought it up in his interview with Chris Van Vliet here. Um, but I've heard other people say it. I'm not taking credit for that idea. But when I did see someone else raise that point, might have been in the comments of a YouTube video, genius. Maven would make a fantastic general manager. He could have a whole new run in wrestling as the authority figure of some kind. And I don't mean like, you know, Eric Bischoff authority figure. I mean, or Teddy Long. I mean like Jack Tunney, like once in a while. Maybe an Adam Pierce at most, you know, uh, or a William Regal at most. Uh, the casual authority figure, the guy that just has to come out and make matches and set things straight, 
could be an AEW. They could use a, a, a guy like that. He doesn't need to come out and start every show. He doesn't need to interrupt every segment. He doesn't need to be a heel trying to make the baby face's life a nightmare. He can just be like a guy that comes out instead of Tony Khan when, hey, the titles were vacated. They were stripped. We need to have a tournament now. He could be that guy. Jack Tunney in the old WWF days, man. The president, Jack Tunney, when he came out, shit was about to go down. Right? Maven could do that. He's got a full shoot ter- shoot job. He works on Wall Street, I believe. Um, but, you know, he could be flown in for shots here and there. Absolutely. And he's got his YouTube shit, so he could even do, like, video Shit, you know, he could even film it, like, from his home with, like, they could just send him, like, an official AEW backdrop or some shit. There's a lot of things that could be done. So, uh, I think Maven has a per Look, as far as his YouTube channel goes, I suggest everybody go subscribe to it. Check it out. Follow it. Now, you know, like, you're going to know a lot of this stuff. He's talking down. He's dumbing it down. You're going to know all this, but a lot of people don't. And that's why he's having so much success. He's reaching that beginner entry level, slightly vaguely curious. He's reaching the people that don't know what a gig is, right? People don't know, oh, wrestlers blade themselves. That's insane. He's reaching those people. But it's fun. You know, you get little gems like he talks about, you know, his first pair of boots was given to him by Triple H. For all the things we hear, bad things about Triple H back in his heyday when he was on top. And that was certainly during that time. Dude gave Maven a pair of his fucking wrestling boots. His first wrestling boots. So, good stuff like that. Maven, fantastic channel. And I think he's got the personality, the charisma, the speaking ability, the look. All of it where he could be a contributing member to wrestling in today's world. He could have a whole new run years later in a in a completely different role. And look, he's good he could take a bump if he needs to, you know, for a big angle of some kind. You know, get down, get fucking colored up by somebody who's a recluse. Remember when Vader beat the shit out of Gorilla Monsoon, how big that was at that time? I think they could do some really cool stuff. I'm excited to see where Maven's career goes from here, and I'm glad that he's back in the uh, the the zeitgeist of professional wrestling. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next. Oh yeah, thanks for checking out the video, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like it if you liked it, yeah. And you can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on the channel. Oh yeah, dig it!